Tiago Mata, who's a research fellow at the University of Cambridge. Um, and he's also been running a part of the History of Economics Playground blog on the INET website for the last year and a half. Um, welcome, Tiago. Hi, Perry. Nice now, to meet you. seeing you here, I'm reminded of when I first approached you about uh, moving the Playground blog onto the INET website, and I remember you were you were surprised. You said something like, "Are you sure? Have you read this blog?" Yes, I was surprised because uh, we, we never intended the blog to be um, a mouthpiece or a um, or anything directed at economists. And you convinced me otherwise that there was room for historians and there was room for a blog such as ours, which was a community blog of thinking through our own lives in academia. And so this blog had existed for a few years, I guess, before it, we moved it over to the INET website. Um, how, why did you ever start this thing in the first place? Well, I started in 2007. A number of us met at one of the meetings of the History of Economic Society, and we felt that every year these meetings would be the only opportunity we had to talk to each other and let um, one another know about what was happening with our research and what were kind of problems we were facing. And we thought it'd be an interesting uh, medium to use a blog to stay in touch throughout the year and draw other people into, into a conversation about um, what's happening, news about the, the profession of the history of economics, news about what's happening in archives, where, which archives are becoming available. Um, and four or five of us got together and started it up on, uh, on one of these free platforms, WordPress. Mm -hmm. And there it stayed until it moved to INET. So now this is 2007, so you had your PhD, but you were a young, a young uh, scholar. Yeah, that was the year um, I was probably starting my second postdoc. So I did my PhD in London at the LSE, and I had a one-year postdoc at UCL, also in London. And then I had a one-year postdoc that took me to Duke to do some uh, research mm -hmm. on more or less what I'm doing now, uh, economic journalism. So the thing. other members of the blog were also in the sim same sort of career stage as, as you? There was, well, you know, the, one of the uh, members of the blog was an assistant professor, and in, in actually in two years he became a full professor in France, so he was a little bit older. But most of us were either on our final years of PhD or just about finished. And you were from all over the world. I guess that was the important thing. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We had, uh, most of us are European. I don't think we ever had a North American, but we had a, uh, Pedro Duarte, who was from Brazil, and he was doing his PhD at Duke. And, mm -hmm. um, and we've continued to expand. So it's sort of interesting that most of the members are European because I think that's where the history of economics is still has some vitality. Well, we're, INET has, of course, been very happy to have you, and we've involved you in other things, too. I'm interested in how, uh, over the last year, year and a half, um, you were surprised to be asked to join INET, and now you're here. How has that changed uh, what you do? Well, it changed a great deal. Uh, we never thought ourselves as a, uh, we've always reported on meetings, but the coming to the INET meetings gave yeah. us an opportunity to blog in sort of what generally blogging is. We have as a forum of discussion, we always had a forum of discussion, but coming to the INET meetings, we had a chance to kind of comment on re in real time um, about what was happening in these meetings. And we had the chance also to do these videos and then with practitioners with economists, and then try to provide some sort of context of what is being said in these videos. And we would not have done that without INET. Um, in terms of our own visibility, we've had more solicitations that otherwise we would not have had. Um, we're not famous, no, nothing like that. And we, a lot of these sort of are extensions of INET's effort to open economics to new ideas, and particularly to you know interesting old ideas, which is probably why people seek us out. Mm -hmm. Now, the decision to do this in a blog, I mean, there's a whole world of blogging. And how do you see your blogging fitting into this uh, larger blogosphere world? I think the, the most prominent blogs are very, and I've written briefly about this, are very connected with conventional publication outlets, with uh, things like the New York Times, like the Wall Street Journal, The Economist. Mm -hmm. And if, if they're not hosted by the, these institutions, they're at least in some conversation with them. Those are the more prominent blogs. Uh, the, Meaning the, the ones that get the most hits. The ones that get most hits, the yeah. ones that build up careers. Uh, ours is much, is, does not have that kind of, of role. And we're not trying to branch out and just become relevant in policy discussions. Um, 
we are academics and what we're interested in doing with this blog is to contribute to academic uh, debate within our community. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to set up an agenda. We're trying to figure out what are the themes that people want to talk about. Um, so it's experimental and it's, it's a playground. It, we're sort of playing around with things and seeing which, which games we want to play the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's one of the charming things about it that you always refer to yourself as kids in the playground and yes. the sandbox. Well, you are still relatively young from my point of view because I'm looking at your CV here and I see you got your PhD in 2005 in economic history at the London School of Economics, is that That's right? right? Yeah, so well, my bachelor's was in economics, my master's yes. degree was in, in economics. Portugal. Well, one, one in Portugal, master's degree was Cambridge, uh -huh. also economics. And then I saw the history of economics at that stage as a continuation of that. Um, mm -hmm. And so I joined the LSE, the Economic History Department at the LSE, wanting to look at dissenting perspectives in the profession and using history as a way to learn them in a different way. But I wanted, I saw myself as, as, as wanting to contribute to that, to mm -hmm. heterodox economics. Mm -hmm. As time went by and as my supervisor uh, did her magic upon me, she convinced me that history was more interesting and that sometimes the, the historian needs to put some distance between himself and that material. Mm -hmm. So I ended up writing a history of community building in dissent economics in America in the 1960s and 70s. So looking at how radical economics was built up um, during the turmoil of the 60s mm -hmm. and how post-Keynesian economics likewise uh, emerged out of those kind of the, conf the campus, campus unrests and mm -hmm. the crisis of economics during the period. Um, so I'm sort of very aware that economics periodically has crisis of public credibility because that was the material for my PhD. Which it has now, uh, at least that's, that's, right. that's the founding assumption of INET. I, I'm noticing also your new project that you just mentioned, that you're, you're back at Cambridge now um, with a five-year grant uh, to study the economics in the public sphere. Um, does this connect up with your dissertation research? How did you get from there to here? What I saw was that a lot of these um, radical views or dissenting views were not expressed in the mainstream uh, scholarly journals, but found a way um, found their way into print through mainstream media even. So you'd be, you'd be easier to find content on radical economics in the late 70s in the, wall, in the New York Times than it would in the in, academic journals. Than the, in the academic oh. journals. Oh, interesting. So I was sort of interested, why do journalists, what are the criteria that lead journalists to look out for these dissenting voices while the profession is turning their backs to them? Um, and that kind of grew into something else as all these things, right? Uh, you know, you start with one idea, you think you're going to contribute to one debate, and then you realize there's something, there's a whole world out there that, that hasn't been looked at. And that world is the existence or non-existence of economic, economics journalism in, in America. Uh, in Europe, talking to journalists, uh, talking to economists, pardon, talking to economists, asking their advice about policy, and having uh, opinionated uh, op-eds about economic ideas and economic knowledge is a mainstay. In the U.S. it is not. And so I'm interested in comparing different countries and figuring out how do economic knowledge comes into print or, or it doesn't or gets. And so the, the research project now is a history of economic journalism from 1945 looking at five different countries and trying to historicize uh, economic knowledge in the newsroom. Uh, uh, economic knowledge in the newsroom, that, that, that's, a, that's a nice title. Uh, I can imagine a book like that. Now you say that's, that's five different countries. This sounds like a very big project. You're not doing this yourself, are you? No, so the, this is a project grant and I'm the principal investigator in the grant, but there will be two postdoctoral appointments, two postdoctoral researchers joining the project and two doctoral students. They, and each of them will work on a separate country and we will work as a team trying to draw a comparison between these different national contexts, the publications, and the way the newsrooms are run in these different places. Well, we hope that you save time to keep doing the uh, Playground blog and don't get too distracted by your, your research. Uh, but of course, you do have a couple of other people to help you there on the Playground blog. And we're, we're glad to have them. And we're glad to have you, Tiago. Thank you very much.